Hey everyone, welcome to the next tutorial in the Advanced Pi Game series. Um, I don't know how much we're going to get done in this video today, but I just wanted to work on it a little bit, and whatever we knock out, we knock out. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in our constants file, there'll be a section called tile information. And really all I'm putting here is just some information, because our, our game's it's based around Super Nintendo or the 16-bit era of games. A lot of stuff's going to be based around tiles. So I just want some constant information that has, uh, um, like, the size of certain tiles. Um, so we'll do something called, like, small tile size, and that'll be 8. Because a small tile is going to be, well, I'm actually going to put 8 by 8. Um, and then we'll do medium tile size, and that'll be, like, a tuple of 16 by 16. Um, large tile size will be 32 by 32. So those are just there in case we need them uh, to make squares that are the size of like the standard tiles that will be in our game. Just something I wanted to add. Um, what's the next thing I want to work on? Let's work on a... Let's make another file here and let's do our static entity. So the way I kind of want it to work uh, if we go to our docs, if you remember here, where did I put it? We're going to be using inheritance. So Pygame comes with the base sprite class. We're going to extend that and make a static entity class that then extends to the dynamic entity and then to a character and then to a player. And again, after each one of these, it will also, like a static entity, will also branch off into a tile class. Uh, dynamic entity can break off into um, uh, not necessarily a character, but say like a, a, a tile that's animated or something, like a torch that flickers. It's not necessarily a static tile that's just a picture, but it's like a, an object in our game. Um, a character is something that has like a name or a health or a, an attack power or something like that. So the character class could break off into player, but it could also break off into an NPC or it could break off into an enemy. And we'll write those um, as our game progresses. But it all starts with that sprite class and we get that from Pygame. So let's go to static entity and we'll import Pygame and make our static entity class, which is going to inherit from the sprite class. And let's think of how we want to do this. Let's go ahead and import constants as C. And I don't have all this planned out in my head right now. We're kind of doing this on the fly. Um, so I'm probably going to write some stuff in here. We might change it later. I don't know. But uh, we need to run this, the constructor method for the sprite class. Oh, not sprite. Static entity. All right, so we'll do, um, for a static entity, we need an image um, every time we make a static entity. So we'll, every time a static entity is made, you need to pass in a image. So we'll do image equals, um, and by default, if you don't pass in anything, we'll just, we'll just make it a surface. So pygame.surface and it will be a medium tile. So it'll be a 16 by 16 uh, square if you don't pass anything in there. And then we need to get its rect attributes. Uh, what else we need? Self.positionx and that'll equal 0.0. .0. I'll explain why I'm making these uh, floating point values in a second. All right, there's other stuff we're going to need other than that, but let's go ahead and write the update method. Um, so for a static entity, uh, I don't want a lot of logic in the update method. I kind of want it to have 
the update method is going to have a list of methods that it runs, and then inside those methods is where we write, where we're going to write them down here, and that's where all like the math and logic's written. Because I don't want to clutter up the update method. I want, if you ever have to troubleshoot, I want you to be able to read the update method and easily just kind of see what it's doing. And then if you need to go into each one of those methods that's listed, you can go and read all the math or whatever logic it's doing to kind of troubleshoot. So I'm going to just make one called update position. And we'll write that down here. And update position, we're going to um, add. This is why I did floating point. So in Pygame, when you draw something to the screen, you can't use a floating point value. You have to use an integer. But let's say I wanted my character's speed to, or their. Yeah, let's say I wanted their speed to be less than one pixel per second. Well, I couldn't do 0.5, so I have to kind of have this proxy variable in between. So I add their velocity to their position, which both of those are floating points. And then when I go to actually draw the, the sprite to the screen, uh, which uses the rect attribute, which you should know from like the basic pie game tutorial. I, whatever their position is, I assign that to the rect attribute and convert it back to an integer. That way I, I can adjust their position on the screen using floating points, but when it goes to actually draw it, it just uses the uh, an integer instead of a floating point. Um, that might be confusing right now, but I'm gonna type up the code and hopefully it makes sense. So we'll do position x plus equals self dot velocity x and self dot position y plus equals self dot velocity y. And after we update the x position, we'll do to draw them on the screen. It has to be the the rect dot x is the attribute it uses to draw the the uh, sprite on the screen. So we'll assign it the integer version of self dot position x. So it'll drop the floating point portion off. And we'll do the same with uh, rec dot y here. Uh, there we go. So I don't want to write all this, and this isn't even that much, but I don't want to write all this inside the update method um, because the update method on, like, say, when we get to the dynamic entity class, it's going to have like five or six things in, inside of it. And if you ever want to know how the update position portion works, you can just jump down here and then read all the logic for how it works. Uh, but the dynamic entity is also going to have like an update animation, update uh, states, um, and some other stuff, uh, handle user input or something like that. Uh, it'll have other things. Uh, so I just don't want to clutter it up. Uh, so let's look at this real quick and let me see if I want to edit anything or add anything to it. Oh, let's do this. Um, let me find a file on my computer real quick. I've used it in a bunch of other programs. Actually, not that one. Actually, I probably should have showed this in the first video, but here's a... Uh, this has a file that I'm gonna grab that ultra colors file. I think I talked about these. This is just a list of a ton of colors that I'm gonna that are all in one file, so I don't have to memorize the RGB values. I'm gonna be grabbing that file in a second, um, but I don't know if I ever showed this in any of the other tutorials, and I probably should have showed it in the first one. But using kind of the same um, you know setup that we're doing in this program and organizing everything and doing it with the state system and just kind of making a scalable game. I kind of used that whole system making this as well. Uh, this was just something I was messing around with, but I'll go ahead and show it to you. Um, it might be, I'm going to turn my volume down because it's probably going to be pretty loud. If this is the one I'm thinking of. Oh, I don't think, this isn't it. I'll find it real quick. Hold on one second. Okay, I found it. Just give me a second to uh, run it here. All right. 
Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so this should run. This is a game I was kind of working on a while back. Um, I don't know if, I don't know how loud that is. Hold on one second. Let's turn that down. Um, but yeah, so like this press, that, that splash screen you saw was a state the game can be in. This is the press start menu. It's a state the game can be in. As soon as you press enter, and I got it to work with a controller as well, so I just ripped the sprites from Mega Man X. But it has a, we'll be working on making a menu like this. Uh, so you get options and you can toggle full screen, which is probably gonna jack OBS up, but let's see if it works. Yeah, it's so it's full screen on my end, but it is uh, OBS looks really jacked up and that's because of the resolution of the game, but that's fine. Uh, all right, now we're back. So you can go back. So all these menus I got to where they can have sub menus. Uh, if you got a single player, so here's the character select screen where I had a. It was it was going to be Mega Man where you could actually play levels in Mega Man, but you could use like characters from other video games. Uh, this is about as far as I got. So I did get a, a tile mapping system to work, and it would draw the level out and. Uh, it would also put a collision map over that to handle collision detection, but that got all messed up, and I never, I never, I kind of stopped working on it. And this was like years ago, um, but yeah, like no matter who you pick, right here, it's gonna pick Mega Man, and he kind of just falls through the stage. The stage is like at the top, and animation and collision was all jacked up. But doing what we're doing now, we're gonna get farther than that, and we're gonna make everything work. But yeah, I just, I just saw that and thought I'd show that to you. Um, but the real thing I need, I need to grab this file. So can I just drag this over here? Yeah. Um, so I'll put a link down to this file. All it is is just a ton of colors that I made and gave them their RGB values. So now you don't have to, you can just type in the name of a color and it works. Um, so let's go to static entity. And we'll do self.color equals uh, oh let's do this Im import ultra colors as color and we'll just make the default color for a static entity and this is if you don't pass an image in so like for testing or something uh, the color will be yellow and then we'll do self.image.fill uh, self dot color. Um, obviously, if we pass an image in, we need to write some logic to not color it in, but we'll worry about that when we get to actually testing putting tiles and stuff on the screen. Um, so I think that's pretty much all we need for this right here. Right to color, image that fill. So a static entity can just, it just either it has an image and it can move on the screen. And I know you're probably not thinking tiles move on the screen, uh, but they technically do. The, the window is uh, kind of like a it's just imagine a static window and if I move the character around the screen the tiles are actually moving um, they're just it's kind of an illusion that they're not moving but they are moving in relation to the window um, so they static entities can move their position uh, so let's go ahead and just make dynamic go ahead and get dynamic entity started and that's going to inherit from static entity This one, we're not going to finish at all. This one is going to require a lot of stuff to go in it. Um, and import ultra colors as color. I think that might be all we need. Um, so we'll do class dynamic entity. It's going to inherit from static entity. And for testing purposes, if 
Oh, I remember when we when we do the constructor for a stat for a static entity, it needs an image, uh, which will actually have to pass in an image for a dynamic entity as well. So image equals pygame dot surface, and it will be a uh, uh, what do we call it? Got to import pygame and import constants. As C. Okay. There we go. So when you make a dynamic entity, you also have to pass in an image, and that image in turn gets passed down to the static, uh, uh, the static entity class constructor method right here. Uh, but the color we're going to make is different. So color will be for a dynamic entity will be blue. And we'll fill it with uh, self dot color. Uh, the dynamic entity is also going to have the uh, uh, self dot update position. It'll also have update state, and it will also have update animation. We're not going to write the logic for these today, um, but. I just want to go ahead and get the template kind of put in there to work on it. And we kind of need to copy. Oh, I misspelled dynamic right here. Let me fix that. Uh, refactor. Uh, if you're ever looking, trying to figure out how to rename a file in PyCharm, it's a. Uh, if you right-click it, it's under the refactor menu, and then there's rename. So this is a static entity. So let's go ahead and just copy that. Actually, I don't. I don't need to write that. Uh, sorry. Yeah, since static entity already has the update position method, um, we don't need to rewrite that down here. Um, but I do need to add the update state and update animation. Um, ah, there's so much stuff I know I need to add right here, but I don't want to confuse you. But I'm just going to do it anyway because that's how we're going to get it done. So self. Uh, every dynamic entity is going to have an animation object because dynamic entities can animate uh, and we're not going to make that today but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you it ha we're going to give it an object called animation and it's going to equal an animation group that we will eventually make um, it will also have a state object which will equal a entity state group, which we are also not going to make today, but we will make in the future. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and write their imports up here as well. So from animation, import animation group, and from uh, entity state, uh, import entity state group. None of this exists yet, but I'm just getting it ready for the future. That'll probably be what we work on next, um, which is, yeah, that's definitely a whole video in itself. But, um, yeah, this video is getting kind of long. So hopefully uh, some of this made sense. I know some of it was probably confusing. But uh, the next video, I think we're going to work on the probably this entity state system, and I'll explain how that works. Um, essentially, if we make a... Uh, like a character or something, they can have um, states like crouching, idle, jumping, attacking, and this is kind of where all the logic for that happens. How all the back end stuff for how it handles how to flip between states will be put in this entity state object that every dynamic entity object will have. Um, so, yeah, we didn't knock out too much in this video, but uh, in the next video, yeah, we're going to get into that entity state system. So I'll see you guys in the next video.